In this lecture, we're going to focus on the metabolism of LDL particles, so low density lipoproteins. So inside our liver cells, we produce VLDL particles, very low density lipoproteins. And so they contain a very high amount of triglycerides, and they also contain some cholesterol and cholesterol esters and proteins and phospholipids. The point, of building, uh, the point of building these VLDL particles is to move triglycerides and other fats to other extrahepatic cells of the body. And so liver cells produce VLDLs and then release them into the bloodstream, and then the VLDLs move in the bloodstream to capillaries of places like cardiac tissue, uh, skeletal muscle tissue, adipose tissue, and there we have lipoprotein lipases. And these lipases break down the triglycerides in the VLDL into fatty acids. The fatty acids are then absorbed by that extrahepatic tissue. And then this process happens over and over and over again. And eventually when enough triglycerides are broken down and removed from the VLDL particle, we form an IDL particle. And so the IDL particle, the intermediate density lipoprotein, contains fewer triglyceride molecules than the VLDL. Now the IDL has one of two fates. The IDL either is taken up by the liver or some other extrahepatic cell via this process of receptor mediated endocytosis or it can be further broken down into LDL, low density lipoprotein. And so as we remove more and more triglycerides from the IDL and we exchange some apolipoproteins, we form LDL. And the LDL out of all of these lipoproteins contain, contains the lowest amount of triglycerides and the highest amount of cholesterol and cholesterol esters. And so for this reason, LDL is considered the bad cholesterol, the bad lipoprotein. Now what happens to the LDL? Well, about 70% of the LDL on the normal conditions is absorbed and cleared by the liver and the remainder is taken up by extrahepatic tissue. So in this lecture, I'd like to focus on the process by which LDL particles are absorbed by the liver, and this process is known as receptor-mediated endocytosis. So here we have a diagram of the liver cell, hepatocyte. We have the surface of the liver, the cell membrane, and then we have the inside of the cell. So we have the intracellular space, the extracellular space. Now everything begins on the surface of the liver cell. So on the surface we have these negatively charged glycoproteins known as LDL receptors. And these LDL receptors can recognize and bind apolipoprotein B100 that is found on LDL. So the more of these LDL receptors we have on the surface of the liver cell, the more of the LDL particles we're going to absorb from the bloodstream and the lower the amount of LDL that is going to be present inside the bloodstream. Conversely, if we have few LDL receptors on the surface, then we're not going to be able to absorb as much LDL into the liver cell and so we're going to increase the amount of LDL inside our blood. So I want to stop here for a moment and talk about thyroid hormones. So the thyroid gland produces thyroid hormones and these thyroid hormones can affect the amount of LDL receptors present on the cell surface. So if we have a lot of thyroid hormone that will increase the expression of LDL receptors on the surface thereby increasing the absorption of LDL from the blood and that can decrease cholesterol levels and LDL levels inside the bloodstream. Conversely, if we have a condition known as hypothyroidism, in which the thyroid gland isn't producing a lot of thyroid hormone, then we're essentially going to decrease the expression of LDL receptors, and that can decrease the absorption of LDL and cholesterol by the liver, thereby increasing cholesterol inside the bloodstream. And this can cause hypercholesterolemia, and that can increase the risk of developing atherosclerosis. So LDL receptors can recognize ApoB100, but we also have other LDL receptors that can recognize additional apolipoproteins. For example, we have LDL receptors that can also recognize ApoE, and this is found on IDL and chylomicrons. 
So in the same exact way that LDL particles utilize this receptor-mediated endocytosis process in the liver, these other ones, IDL and chylomicrons, also utilize this very similar process. So if you know one, you know all the others. So here we have these LDL particles and they use ApoB100 to bind onto these LDL receptors. But two things must happen before we can actually bring the LDL into the cell. Number one is we have these adapter proteins or adapter complexes that bind onto the surface and that allows all these receptors to basically accumulate in one localized region on the cell. So instead of being dispersed, they all are brought together by the activity of the adapter proteins. In addition, we have an additional protein known as clathrin that coats the internal portion of the membrane and that allows the formation of this invagination, this pit. And so we have all of these LDL receptors that are localized inside the pit and now these LDL particles can bind onto the receptors and this process of invagination can take place. And so we invaginate and we form this vesicle. The first thing that happens is this vesicle loses all of these proteins. So it loses the adapter proteins, it loses the clathrin, and all of these proteins can be recycled by the cell and reused by the cell. And once we form that naked vesicle that doesn't have any of these proteins, that vesicle can, uh, can basically fuse with other similar vesicles and we give rise to an endosome. So in the endosome, we have a bunch of these receptors that are bound to a bunch of these LDL particles. Now on the surface of the endosome, we have an ATP pump. The ATP pump hydrolyzes ATP and it brings H plus ions into this structure. And it decreases the pH inside the structure to about four to five. And so the acidity here increases. And by increasing the acidity, we dissociate the LDL particles from these LDL receptors. Now, we have an important enzyme inside the cell known as PCK, uh, PC, uh, PCSK9. And so this PCSK9 is an enzyme that can actually bind onto this LDL receptor, LDL complex, and it can prevent the dissociation of this complex. And what this does is it increases the breakdown of LDL receptors inside the cell. Why is this useful? Well, if we have a lot of cholesterol and LDL particles inside the cell, we don't want any more. And so we activate the PCSK9 enzyme, and this will increase the amount of LDL receptors that we break down inside the cell. But when PCSK9 is not around, what happens is the following. The decrease in the pH inside this compartment causes the dissociation of the LDL particle from the LDL receptor, and then we have this compartment form. So what happens is the LDL particles, which are now dissociated from the LDL receptors, migrate to one side, and all these LDL receptors migrate to the other side, and we form this compartment known as curl. Well, curl stands for compartment for uncoupling of receptor and ligand. So once we form this curl, all of these receptors are found inside this region and it basically breaks off and it forms this vesicle that can now go back into the membrane and so these LDL receptors can be used. But what happens to the LDL particles themselves? Well, the LDL that uh, the, this compartment that contains the LDL particles that breaks off combines with lysosomes in the cell. And so the fusion allows the lysosome to now begin breaking down that LDL particle. So the lysosomes contain these hydrolytic enzymes that act on the LDL particles and break it down to its constituents. And so we break down into amino acids, fatty acids, phospholipids, and cholesterol, and all of this can be reused by the cell. Now, the cholesterol that is not used by the cell can be stored in the liver cell in the form of cholesterol ester, and the enzyme that converts this uh, cholesterol into cholesterol esters is ACAT. 
So when we have high levels of cholesterol inside the liver cell, that activates ACAT and that converts cholesterol into cholesterol ester and that can then be stored inside the cell for later use. In addition, high levels of cholesterol also decrease the production of HMG-CoA reductase, which is the enzyme that controls the rate limiting step of de novo synthesis of cholesterol. In addition, it also decreases the expression of LDL receptors. And all of this makes sense. Because if we have high levels of cholesterol inside the liver cell, number one, we don't, want to, uh, we don't want to produce any new cholesterol. And number two, we don't want to bring any cholesterol from the outside of the cell. And so this negative feedback loop makes sense. And the final thing I want to talk about is something called scavenger receptors present on macrophages. So LDL particles are bad cholesterol. So LDL particles can be oxidized as they flow inside the bloodstream and they can actually also deposit in the wall of blood vessels. And so what normally happens is we have these macrophages that contain scavenger receptors type A or simply scavenger receptors on the surface of the macrophages and the macrophages can use these receptors to locate these LDL particles and to basically endocytose them, so basically engulf them. Now, if we have a blood vessel, so here we have a blood vessel, and this is the wall of the blood vessel. So if we have LDL particles moving into the wall and then they become oxidized, the macrophages swimming in a bloodstream can move into the wall and engulf this oxidized LDL particle, and that's a good thing. But if this happens a lot, it can actually cause inflammation in the wall of the blood vessel, and over time that can cause development of atherosclerotic plaque and this process is known as atherosclerosis. And that's exactly why if we have high levels of LDL particles in the bloodstream that increase the risk of developing atherosclerosis of our blood vessels.